Hey everyone, Brian Smith here, and it's been a while since I've done a sound switch tutorial for you guys. So I wanted to come up with some basic stuff just to help people out. Um, you know, one of the biggest things that I see having uh, being an issue when I am talking with other people about sounds or trying to help them out is learning how to set positions. So today I'm going to do a little bit of a kind of overview of how I set positions and how I think about it when I'm doing it and show you with a visualizer what my process is. So hopefully it gives you a better idea of like how to work with your own moving heads when you're setting your positions. So let's switch over to that view now so you can see my desktop. Very good. Okay. So uh, the prog program that I use for my visualization is uh, Capture. It's a little pricey. Um, it's a little bit of an ordeal to get the license. You got to go through and find a license and get it downloaded. And generally, you have to buy it in euros. Although I did discover um, David Henry over at Learn Stage Lighting um, and Learn Stage Lighting Gear, they can sell you the licenses now. Um, and I would totally recommend going and checking out A, his channel and them um, to get license or get some lights and see what they're doing over there. Cool stuff for sure. So let's dig into what we have going on here um, in this project. So um, I'm actually working on a project for someone right now, doing some programming for them. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to kind of get their lights in. So I have them, I have to add more right now uh, for this project. We're working with the Chauve Hybrid uh, 140SRs. So Simple setup. I mean, this is a pretty standard DJ setup for people. We have, uh, you know, right here, I've got the booth. Uh, we've got some totems. There's some Asteras on there, some speakers uh, and our movers and uplights around the room. So when I am looking here at the quadrants, I want to, usually when I'm setting a moving head position, I want to keep everything in one quadrant. Um, not, that's not, you know, 100% all the time, but if you do that, you're going to have less of your lights spinning around in different positions. So for me, I always start, you know, when I'm doing this, whether I'm at a venue or doing it in a program, is making sure that my lights are in the home position. So the home position for most lights, especially if they're on a totem, is going to be sticking straight up. Um, some lights, you'll have the arm of the moving head uh, facing the crowd, and some you will have it facing uh, the DJ booth. So that's always a consideration when you're doing this. But in reality, the way that we do it is the same no matter which way it faces. So the first thing I want to do is I want to grab, well, here, I'm going to do, I'm going to undo that for a second. I want to grab one of these lights. So let's do this one. All right. So now I'm moving it around. I can see where it's going. So remember, as you're setting a position, However you get it to that position is where the light's going to go. So right now, like say I'm setting this DJ booth position. Uh, let's see. We'll do it this way. All right. If I want to get to the DJ booth, it's going to go back and behind. I don't necessarily want to do that. So what I want to do is, usually is I want to bring everything forward first and figure out where forward is. So that way I don't ever have to worry about the beam hitting the back wall. All right, so now we've figured out forward, we're bringing it down, and I want this to literally hit the DJ booth. So we're bringing it down, all right. Bam, it's hitting the DJ booth. I like to have it cross over the DJ booth, especially if I'm using two moving heads, just because I think it gives a little bit of a better look when it does actually hit the table. All right, so that's how we set one. Now, most of us are setting up two. And that's where things can get tricky or easy, depending on how you do it. So I'm actually going to reset what we did here. And we're going to bring that right to the center. Let's select both of these now. So I'm going to do the same process. I want to find out what is the front. All right. So going here. So it's for me in the front is this bottom right quadrant with how these are set up. I'm going to bring them down. They're moving together, which is awesome. But here's where we get tricky. I'm moving this to the DJ booth, but the other one doesn't want to go there. So over here, we have our pan and tilt invert buttons. Now, if you've programmed moving headlights in, you know, master slave mode, you know, using sound active, 
you may have gone into the menu of your light to invert the pan or tilt. You do not need to do that here. You do that in sound switch. It takes care of that for you. So let's see what we're going to have to do here. Pan. Nope, that's not the one that I want to do. I want to do the one that's on the right. Pan is not going to. Nope, that's not going to be what we're going to use. So let's bring it back. Tilt. That's what we're going to use. All right. Now those are mostly in sync. They're set up a little bit off center from each other in the visualizer. So bear with me. Now, when you've done this, you'll see up here has, you know, you have your solid circle down here, but you have your uh, hollow circle here. And that's kind of basically the opposite. So that's like where the position really is, but you're still moving it with the solid circles. So now if I move them, they're moving together. Oh, you know what? Interesting as we move it, right? Because now we're seeing the pan is off. This is why you test it. So let's hit that pan again. All right, now we're in business. Look at that. Boom, easy. DJ booth, our position is set. So yeah, like I said, I like to have it a little bit across the booth. Perfect. All right. The next position that I always set is a center position. Now, some people like to have their moving heads on the dance floor. Some people do not. Um, so we're going to kind of talk through that. You know, if you're, when you're doing lights onto the dance floor, um, sometimes they can be super bright and they can get people's eyes. So if you're not dimming things or you have super bright lights, the other thing too is like if you're using gobos that have, you know, and you really like to use gobos and they have a lot of patterns in them, you might not want to put the patterns on people's clothes while they're dancing. Um, so some people like to keep the moving heads up in the ceiling and some people do like to have them down on the dance floor. So I, you know, it's really preference. Um, center for me is either center of the ceiling above the dance floor or center of the dance floor, depending on how I'm going to program. Um, but I do always have an actual dance floor center cue. So especially if you're going to do like a static look for first dances, that's the cue that I would use. So let's get this center. And just for the sake of uh, the visualizer here and doing it this way, we're going to put dance floor center uh, actually on the floor. So again, I'm just grabbing, you know, grabbing the, the red dots. And if you're doing this in person, you want to watch your moving heads to see which way they're going to go. So I already know that I want to come probably come down and to the right to get my positions. All right. Let's call that, boom, dance floor center. All right. And you'll see it's not very far off in the quadrants here from what the DJ booth is. Right? Everything's going to be pretty close to each other. They shouldn't be all that far away. So let's move on to our next position, front corners. And so this is all set up a little wacky. So I'm going to bring it back to home. All right. And we're going to bring it down, bring it into this quadrant. And let's see. We want to get into the corners here. Sometimes I like to do a cross on the corners. And sometimes I like to do it just straight, but it kind of depends on how we can hit. Like I can't quite hit the corners the way I want to in this setup. So I'm going to cross them to make sure I can hit those front corners. All right. Very good. Back corners. Same deal, right? Let's bring it back to home. I'm going to bring it down, cut it over. Back corners, you know, I can do straight down and I think I'm going to do straight on to the back corners um, just because we already did the cross over on the front corners and I'm going to do some more um, I'm going to do some more crossover in here so um, let's do let's do that crossover so that's the next one again let's reset our to home so we're in the right spot coming down moving it over and these I you know crossed over I usually like to keep up in the air so I'm going to try to aim these so that they hit the corners over the people, over the people's heads. There we go. Perfect. Up is pretty self-explanatory, um, but I do like to bring it down just a little bit to have some angle, some life to it, right? So we can do that. And then down, same kind of deal with down. I like to bring it just so there's a little bit of angle to it.
And it's almost like front corners, but just slightly different. All right. And then dance floor center. So we're going to bring this back to dance floor center. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move that other center cue um, up to above the dance floor. So dance floor center, and then our center cue here that we had, instead of doing on the dance floor, we're going to make it hit somewhere over the top of the dance floor center. So there's no actual ceiling in here, so we can't see it actually hit the ceiling. So we're going to call it something like that. All right, then we're done. So let's play back this auto loop and see how this looks. Pretty decent, right? Movers are going in cool spots. They're going where we want them to. They're not hitting the back wall. This is how you set your moving positions. So like, I hope that was super helpful for you. Um, I know this is something that people struggle with a lot when they're first learning it. And even people who've been using it for a while struggle with this. Once you get this dialed in, if you're consistent with how you're setting up, when you show up at every venue, you don't necessarily need to reset your positions. Um, you know, they might be just close enough, but sometimes you want to dial them in and that's perfectly fine. You know, in this, I did it in edit mode. You can also edit positions by hitting the MIDI uh, button at the top and going to static looks and editing it in the static look panel. Uh, I think obviously some room for improvement with this would be maybe an actual position panel um, in the MIDI controls. So that way we don't have to go in this way and we can just always kind of go in and set our positions in a page that permanently exists. I don't know why I never thought about that. Let me suggest that to the sound switch guys. I think that's a good one. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm gonna try to get some more videos out to you guys this winter. Uh, now that, you know, it's not quite the busiest season for events, got a little bit more time to focus on trying to dust this channel off. I know I keep on saying that I'm gonna do that, but I'm really doing it this time. Maybe, we'll see. If you guys got ideas for videos, please let me know. And if you're interested in having me do full sound switch programming for you, uh, check out the link down below. Um, we do packages that start at uh, $750, and that will include, and that's as of January of 2024. Uh, could change. And that basically includes, you know, your standard DJ setup with your Auto Loops program for you, um, ready to go, and some assistance getting you set up and running. So, my pleasure to, to help you guys out. I will talk to you soon.